Looks like we're live. Cool. Oops. Cool. So that's there. It's basically 2 p.m. What time is it? 2 p.m. Hello from the UK. Hello, Neon. Neon Complex. Salutations from Vancouver, well, Victoria, West Coast of Canada. I'm still going between the two cities. So, how are you doing? Are you guys still uh, cold up there? Rainy up there? The weather's clearing up here. It's getting sunnier, but it's still a little bit chilly. I know you guys got hit with a serious snowstorm uh, a couple of weeks ago. Like crazy snowstorm. Let's check this out. Make sure it's all going good. Cool. Bonjour. 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 Lucky Luf. Lufs. Hey, brother. Hey, Lord. How are you doing? Glad you can make it on this one. Belgium. So you're 10 p.m. your time right now. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Fun stuff. So again, we'll give everyone a few minutes, a couple of minutes, two to five minutes or something for them to pop by. Um, how is the sound everyone because what I did uh, what I've done is basically turn down the gain on the mic cheers cheers Jack right on it's Lucy aka Luke Luke okay Luke then Lufk is an English football team is it LUFC I used to follow uh, football a lot I actually went to the 1994 World Cup in the United States. I went to the final as well. I went and saw 12 games there. It was amazing. Oh, Leeds, your Leeds. So short for Leeds is uh, LUFC. Cool, cool, cool. Can't stay too long, but will enjoy my stay for sure. Okay, Lord, whenever you got to take off, you take off, man. Uh, there's going to be two streams, actually. Uh, the sound seems good. Okay, awesome. Because what I'm going to do, just to let you know, I got the game turned down. The lay of the land is this. I got the microphone set up here, the computer set up here, and another camera set up here, which is shooting this guy, right? And for me, I like playing backgammon on a wooden board. I don't have any leather or cloth boards, right? Because I love the sound of the dice hitting the board, the wood, right? So I turned the game down a little bit on the mic. So the roll of the dice is not gonna be too loud. So I'm gonna roll the dice like right now let me know if it's too loud if it's too loud i'll roll more gently i'm doing a sort of jump gentle roll right now because i do vary it a lot but here's my medium average gentle roll okay is that too loud for people hey chicho i'm really digging the live streams i was worried the bill hicks break meant no chicho it's actually i guess bill hicks break from editing videos uh, so i'm actually going pretty hardcore pretty hardcore with work in the back end as you can tell i'm doing like four streams when i get a chance back to back uh it's pretty cool it's pretty cool yes i love the frequency of those live streams good to listen to during the day awesome 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 neil so how's the sound of the dice guys is this going to be too loud or it's loud but not too loud Okay, I'll try to keep it uh, on the down low, Luke. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, so let me give you the lay of the land. We got the computer, we got the mic, we got the camera set up here. This is the board that I have. And let me turn off this uh, a little loud relative to your voice, but it's all good. Okay, it's loud, but not too bad. Okay, so a little loud relative to the voice. So um, I'll try to root spin roll the dice more gently but just so you like just to let you know when we play backgammon we hit it hard sometimes right we try to hit the dice on the corners and let these dice spin and that's the beauty of uh, the wind boards right it's loud but not annoying so no problem okay awesome since we got that cleared up let me take off this start shortly sign Okay, so first thing I want to do is show you this backgammon board. Okay, and this backgammon board is um, 
my board in our family that we've used for a very long time like 35 plus years we've been using this board if you remember a while ago i showed you guys my grandmother's backgammon board right and let me bring these out let me give you the lowdown of how this is all connected to what we're going to do with mathematics and what we're going to do with games and how we're gonna create content and just build and grow and link everything up right if you recall i got some pics here so let me scroll down here if you recall a while ago maybe it was a couple of years ago maybe longer than that i showed you guys my grandmother's backgammon board right so that's not the board we're going to play on right now and after showing you guys my grandmother's backgammon board i gave you guys a little bit of history of that board and how how many games we've played on it and that board is older than this board by the way okay then what we did after that we played six games hi chicho hi tink how are you doing hope you're enjoying your afternoon evening morning uh, i'm not sure where you're from uh, where you're watching this from but basically what you see the pics there is the first set of videos i put out with backgammon and that was me showing you guys my backgammon board or my grandmother's backgammon board and you know don't want to think that far but that backgammon board is basically going going coming my direction so i will have two boards at some point right but i will continue to play backgammon with my grandmother and we're still playing right fantastic games we're having right late afternoon from the uk uk awesome awesome and what we ended up doing is we played six games on that board so we collected a lot of data i watched so lord is commenting that i've watched that video uh about you to playing like a couple of days ago absolutely and oh, also glad you enjoyed it glad you enjoyed it and uh, what we did we filmed um, sort of six rounds of me and my grandma playing and the way we do it is we play up to whoever gets to five first right so one of the reasons i did that was because i wanted to keep that i don't know how many games i played with my grandma on that board like huge we must be pushing a thousand like over over a thousand i don't know how many games right so one of the reasons was to keep that for myself right just to remind just a reminder just preserve history right the other one was to collect data we wanted to collect a lot of data because what we're going to do is we're going to take math there for the stuff we're going to do for mathematics asmr math the language of mathematics and math in real life and we're going to analyze dice and the reason we're going to do that is because a, you know a branch of mathematics which is really dominant in our world that has has directly come about from games of chance and dice is one of them right so after that or either before that what we ended up doing is i put out a video showing you guys the probability distribution of two die right so we looked at how the graph looks and what you know the odds are of getting a certain role and you know we put that on a graph right so we put that on a nice little graph whoop, right and we had that in the video and i had some other information as well like table format or whatnot that we covered with dice so we're going to link up the data that we collected with uh, playing back out with my grandmother and we're going to link that up with what we did regarding the probably the distribution of the two of two six-sided die right and i am going to provide the links to all the videos that i'm mentioning in the description of the videos when we load them up on bitchute on youtube right and then what we did recently was we took a look at a sort of street crap sort of a craps game that our gaming group plays every now and then right and there was one monopoly game that we played where there was a sort of a downtime for a monopoly game so we played a fair bit of this and what i decided to do after that was basically show you guys what that game was like and what we did was da -da -da -da, where is that thing uh craps and here's the table that we here's the sort of a table that is related i didn't link up i might have linked up this table in the video but this is sort of a table that i created a while ago when i wrote a 
you know a short article on crops for my blog site back in 2000 and I guess six or seven or eight something like that right so we talked about sort of a street craps dice game right and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into street craps or craps at some point and learn the game of craps as well so all of this stuff is being linked together right what we're doing with the backgammon what we're doing with asmr math and what we're doing with craps right and we're going to look at other dice games as well such as monopoly and axes and allies for sure we'll delve into it right once we do a, you know we're sort of building this randomly and then at some point we're going to bring it all together right highly recommend solitaire dice invented by sid Sacon, saxon i've had loads of fun playing it i've never played it solitaire dice hmm, okay i'll look into it i'll make a little note i got my notepad but i'm really surrounded by things right now so i'm not gonna do too many movements around here okay so that's sort of the rhyme and reason of what we're creating and sort of the grand design that i imagine what i have in mind right where was the craps game invented i believe it's in uh, iran uh coming from the uk i have never heard of it um, oh, craps game. Sorry, backgammon comes from Iran, as far as I know. Craps, I'm assuming, is an American game. It must have come from the United States. Uh, maybe not, but the, I picture craps being played in the streets back in the late 20s or something like this, and sort of the games developing, going underground, doing the speakeasy days, and sort of growing from there. That's what I envision, but I haven't looked into the history of craps. If anybody knows for sure let us know for sure let us know okay so that's sort of what we've covered regarding dice and crap so far we might have covered a little bit more but that's the main core of it right so let me take these guys down doop, these pictures down and I'm gonna link up to those videos in the description of BitChute on YouTube okay me neither backgammon I know because it was very popular and flanders back in the days flanders that's uh, flanders is uh is it scotland or is it still uh flanders is scotland is it not or is it england uh apparently the u.s but it came from a western european game called hazard ah okay cool so western european game called hazard that's where crafts came from so i know in the previous uh when I showed you guys my grandmother's backgammon board, I lifted it up and showed it to you guys. But I'm not going to lift this up, but I am going to show you the other side of it, right? And what I'm going to do with backgammon, the way we play is basically you can play the movement going like this or the movement going like this, right? And since the camera is set up here, I'm going to move these pieces over here, show you the back of the board. And then what we're going to do, we're going to rearrange the pieces so we finish here instead of finishing here that way you're closer to the camera and you see more of the action later on right so let me move these guys around i'm just going to show you the back of this because backgammon boards the inside matters and the back matters right and let me move this gently back because i don't want to hit anything when i lift this up let me show you this and this is the i guess covered side of this and if you recall the my grandmother's board that i showed you it was came in a casing like this and my grandmother actually cr sewed both of these casings and he gave me one to keep my backgammon board in there as well right so this is sort of a felt casing that we put the backgammon board in there and this is sort of the design and these are they're sort of carved out right so let me close this up again and this is handmade i believe put together okay so let me put this back okay and let's rearrange this and during the years we've lost two of these pieces right so we replaced them with two of these guys Lord is mentioning Flanders is the northern part of Belgium oh Flanders is the northern part of Belgium oh yeah that's right you're from Belgium uh, Lord Dutch speaking part Voli Valoni Valoni is the southern part french speaking part oh i didn't know oops so belgium is broken down into two parts i know switzerland is broken down into three different language sections it, italy french and um, german so belgium is 
French and English. Ah, that's cool to know. That's cool to know. I never made made it to Belgium when I was in Europe. Okay. Hey Chicho and chat. But hey, how you doing, brother? Ovex, Ovex. I've been catching some of your games, some of your game streams. Uh, they're very fun, very fun to watch. Glad I could catch the backgammon stream. Awesome, man. Glad to have you here. Thank you for all the gaming that you're putting up. Fun to watch, fun to chill too. Sometimes just put it there and just zone out and relax, right? Um, so let's take a look at this. So we got everything set up. And I'm assuming a lot of people already here know how to play backgammon. But basically, you put five pieces here, two pieces. So the black five, two, five, three. And the white does the mirror of the black, right? So five here, two here, three here, and five here. And the name of the game is basically this. For the black, this is the white territory. This is the black territory. So the black is trying to go in this direction to come here, get all their pieces here. Once all the pieces are here, you can start removing pieces and the white is trying to do it the other way around okay so the white is trying to go take all their pieces in this direction bring them all here and then by rolling the dice pull out pulling out their pieces okay now one difference that we do zake are you uk based then i see your name here often cool so basically the way we play our game is this when the black gets all their when the black is uh, moving their pieces this way right and the white is trying to escape the black zone right if let's say i have pieces like this okay let's say i have this piece and i get a four and a two right actually we don't want it to be four and a two here four and a one right so if i roll a four and a one right in Canada, a lot of people play like this. They say you can go one, two, three, four, hit the white piece in your home territory, and you can run with the one. The way we play, you can't hit and run. If I hit this with the four, I can't escape. Okay. If a piece hits, it can't escape in the home territory. You can escape, hit and run outside of here, but not in your home base. So the only thing you can do. When you hit a piece is to cover it up so if i get a four and a two then i can cover up okay but i can't hit and run in my home territory okay that's the one big difference we have the way i play and the way a lot of people play in canada and my part of the world okay i'm not sure how it is where you guys play hey chicho this is the first stream i've been able to watch this week glad i could make it up oh, awesome glad to have you here man glad to have you here no close do Belgium okay so let me give you the lowdown of my take on backgammon okay because I played this game a lot I played I played this game before I even knew how to play cards I played this game before I even knew how to play soccer play football this game has been a part of my family since I was little and what we used to do we used to sit beside the elders beside the older people who knew how to play and we used to watch we used to watch quietly the way people watch twitch right now right the way you interact or we interact with the internet watching gaming and stuff online we used to do that live we used to sit there and just watch the parents the grandparents the uncles and aunts just sit there and play backgammon right and by watching we learned and what we would do we would sit there as we got older keep on watching and if one of the older people that was playing needed a break we would sort of play a game if we could get it in if the whoever was older that was playing they were better than us if they were willing to teach us they were willing to play with us and if the you know the older people did definitely put in the time to sit with us one-on-one -on -one to teach us the game so there was a huge family and sort of generational connection between the older people teaching and younger people how to play backgammon which i think is something that to a certain degree could be missing in in my part of the world anyway in culture i think it's picking up a lot more right now where the older generation is teaching the younger generation how to play some of these games okay which is one of the reasons that i really wanted to 
you know, I did the videos where me and my grandmother were playing backgammon, and I thought this would be a great idea to do a live stream for playing backgammon, right? Why not? Why not, right? It's a fantastic game. And as far as my opinion on backgammon is concerned, as far as I'm concerned, it's one of the greatest games ever created, if not the greatest game ever created if you look at it from a certain perspective because as far as i'm concerned backgammon is the one game that mimics life the most it has skill okay it requires skill and it requires luck right so there are times where a really good player might play a mediocre player and they will lose a race to five but that's once in a blue moon just like in any type of sporting event where a lower ranked team, a much lower ranked team can sometimes beat a higher ranked team, right? But on average, a better player in backgammon will beat the weaker player, right? And it goes back and forward and the strategies are very unique in backgammon because you're not just playing the dice, you're not playing your what you know your strategy you're also playing the other person it's the interaction once you start playing with someone the interaction in backgammon is incredibly tense incredibly tense and it can carry on for a long time i sat down and played backgammon for eight hours straight okay with one other person i've the only other game i've been able to do that with one other person is poker where i played one-on-one -on -one poker and we did all nighters on it okay isn't backgammon the oldest known board game i don't know it is one of the oldest known board games i know that or is that case uh game in general i don't know pro backgammon streams are the future of twitch <laughs> nice <laughs> maybe i'll get into the pro backgammon game as well i played a lot a lot of backgammon for money um uh, back in the day where i was doing i had a there was a fair bit of gaming involved in terms of uh, gambling in my life right and backgammon was one of them i did quite well i did quite well hey chicho good afternoon first stream for me ah welcome colin welcome uh, christian agreed if i find the balance of lucky skill in backgammon second to none i've had hours of fun playing against my father yeah same here man big fan of the stream chicho awesome awesome will do for now will do for now ah will do for now thank you for the 250 twitch points twitch drills <laughs> whatever you call them i don't know what you call them uh, i gotta look into this uh, so what i thought i would do is to show you my game to show you how we play is just give you a little intro which we sort of talked about and give you a little rundown of what you got to keep in mind and my philosophy of backgammon and I just covered my philosophy, right? So let's talk about, in general, what I'm looking for. In general, what I'm looking for is to prevent someone from escaping my territory. They are called bits. Ah, bits. Thank you for the bits, Will. Um, will do. Okay. Thank you for the bits. So in general, my strategy for backgammon, when I'm playing, when I'm playing someone new or if I'm in general, when I'm playing someone that I've known for a while, I try to prevent them from escaping my territory. So what it means for me is I try to cover up these spots as quickly as possible, okay? So I try to get for the combos to cover, prevent the person from escaping, okay? Now this strategy doesn't work all the time for me. Sometimes the strategy is to get out of town as fast as possible. So sometimes I change up my strategy and try to escape it as fast as I can. In general though, my first thing I shoot for is to prevent the other guy from escaping. And the next thing I try to shoot for while I'm doing this is try to get out of their territory at the same time, right? So it's sort of like a boxing match. You're trying to throw punches and you're blocking at the same time, right? So that's my strategy. And because I have that in mind, and because of the layout of the way backgammon is laid out, what we, what you try to keep in mind is the combinations that you can play. So these guys are two units away, right? So if you get any type of combination on the dice initially, where they're two units away, may they be five, three, four, two, 
uh, six four three one then you can cover these spots right because this moves three this moves one they're two apart so you get if you get any rolls initially that are two apart this is what you're going to play and this is what i play okay six one plays this without a doubt okay six four in general can play this but if i'm on the running side of the game sometimes i do the six four like this because backgammon is very psychological as well so you got to play with your opponent okay chicho just got out of university to catch your stream i hope you didn't make, miss any classes <laughs> nick okay i hope you covered all your classes and you're paying attention right don't miss any classes for streams well sometimes you can i've i've missed some glass classes for some pool games and stuff i used to play at university and uh, when i was taking other type of courses as well i don't like to leave their territory too early as i then have no way to interfere with their end game 100 percent dr uh prunes dr prunes what he just mentioned or she just mentioned is 100 percent accurate you really unless you get six five six five is a no-brainer at the beginning you escape if you get two six fives in a row you run right but if you escape one piece as long as they haven't started covering their territory if they get their covered territory like this if i'm playing black then what i do i try to run away as fast as i can if their coverage of territory is like this then sometimes i do try to hang around here to act as a blocker to prevent people from to prevent the white player from leaving any empty any pieces uncovered right because sometimes the dice aren't nice and they don't give you numbers where you can cover right away and you have to leave your pieces open so if you can you want to leave them open behind the lines right let's assume this guy is escaped my guy's here if this person gets six and a five and i've already covered my six spot piece and this guy can't go then i've given this person the opportunity to go six right and then five to go behind my line but if i have my piece here and they get a six and a five the only thing they can do really is go six and a five right they leave one piece open or they could go six and a five and hit me and do a hail mary which is i wouldn't recommend doing this game this this roll so the best they could do is this and if you have your piece here then you can possibly get one more hit get another piece sent back this way right and once you start sending more than two pieces in this direction in there you start acquiring more of their pieces there's a fine line where is an optimum number of pieces you want to acquire here okay finally catching a live stream awesome t t in comics awesome t in comics right on thanks for being here brother Kankatan. Kankatan. it means they have to avoid leaving single ton single tons as the single tons is that what they call them as the come in say ah i don't know the terminology of backgammon i just use words that we use in armenian and farsi and sometimes english of, of, of course when i play with people that uh, uh speak english only right uh i got to go now okay lord thanks for popping by brother thanks for popping by salutations to belgium i hope you have a good evening and uh, tomorrow morning i have an amazing tomorrow morning as well we'll definitely rewatch the stream on youtube peace everyone goodbye peace okay so that's sort of the mindset the way i play basically what you explained <laughs> cool awesome so i think what we'll do we'll play a game and what i'm going to do i'm going to play both sides so i'm going to play against myself and whenever i'm playing backgammon with usually right now i'm just playing with family i haven't come across anyone that knows the game as well as i do to keep the games going for a while but i am slowly introducing the game to a couple of people okay i'm trying to anyway so um until they get up to speed right now what we're going to do is we'll play against me playing against myself so i'm going to roll for both sides and i'm going to do things a little bit slowly and then we'll speed it up slowly and one other thing i forgot to mention okay um when it comes to keeping track of how many games you win the way i play there's only 
two point type of systems you either get a single game out of the person or you get a double game out of the person a single game is when you're taking stuff out they've had the opportunity to take out at least one piece as well if you finish your pieces and they have at least one piece taken out that's a single game won by you if you finish taking out all your pieces and they haven't been able to take off any pieces that's a double game okay I know that game is done differently different places the point system okay Dante what's up teacher hello Dante hello Dante welcome to some backgammon okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll gently if this is becomes loud okay please let me know and I'll turn down the gain and I'll just speak into the microphone okay and whenever I'm playing backgammon I usually have you know fruits there's sometimes nuts there's sweets like this is dates and mandarins right and usually we got tea going right you gotta have tea going and in general when I'm playing as you could tell when we played with my grandmother we talk a lot and there is a little bit of actually a fair bit of trash talking each other in a good way in backgammon whenever we play against each other okay next time I see my dad's my dad I'm gonna ask him to teach me how to play oh for sure if you don't know how to play learn this game if there's any game worth learning this is it beyond any other game in that I've played and I've played a lot of games really backgammon is it backgammon is it because it builds bond you build a relationship with people you're playing some of the most important people in my life are people that I've played backgammon with like no kidding okay I associate this game with my grand grandmother who passed about 25 years ago oh okay I don't think I've ever seen a board since then not terribly common oh wow you know what uh, I don't know if you had uh, a call uh, call in. I don't know if you had a chance to play with your grandmother I hope you did I hope you did uh, full respect to your grandmother for playing backgammon but if you didn't get a chance chance to play with your grandmother and backgammon and if you don't know the game uh, highly recommend it and I'll do my best to teach this game so if I'm going fast if you have any questions please post them okay yes always got the half tea going nice yeah I used to play up to triple game and use the doubling dice yeah doubling dice we'll get into that later with the doubling dice once we get into the probability and statistics branch of mathematics when we start linking everything up okay you can win a lot of money yes you can and I have if you play with somebody dumb enough to accept doubles all the time or if they all of a sudden the luck changes and you change up your game and you catch them off guard and they have accepted your double and once you once the game of backgammon rolls over oh wow that's when you can really uh, take people for a lot of money if uh, if they don't account for that rollover right it's the same it's the saying that goes in poker right the most the biggest amount of money the most amount of money that you lose in poker is not with the bad hands but it's with the good hands because what happens is you bet the farm and someone else beats you and those are the games that you'll never forget never forget okay a cuppa a cuppa is a must with backgammon best game I ever <laughs> learned hands down hands down so the game of backgammon the way we play is whoever rolls the highest gets to roll first so I'm gonna roll I hope these aren't too loud I rolled the one and I rolled the one on that side the white rolled the one so I'm gonna start calling them white and black okay so this is the white rolling four five right and what you could do is a lot of people will leave the dice on the table but for us we like holding the dice I like holding the dice so whenever something rolls if I'm playing with my grandmother or someone I call out what the roll is four or five and I pick them up and usually put them on the top once they know what they're playing sometimes we grab it and we roll right so the white has to play four or five 
totally i have one games that i had almost given up on myself that comes back to keep you places yeah for sure so four or five what the white is going to do is there's two games you can have and initially i'm going to explain some of the combinations that you can do and then we'll kick up the speed of the game right so there's a couple of main things you can do with four three main things you can do with four four and a five at the beginning of the game you can go five and four right you can go five and four that's a legit play as well this play in general means you're trying to cover these spots asap this play in general means you're trying to cover spots and run at the same time or you can go four and a five and this play generally means you're a runner okay so right now let's assume the white's gonna run for it okay the black rolling and if i miss my rolls if i all of a sudden i do a miscalculation i talk too much and i forget who's supposed to roll please let me know okay correct my mistakes black rolling five three right so right now black has two main games to play because they're two apart we're at the beginning of the game these guys are two apart what you can do is cover a spot five three but what that would mean is you're letting this guy get away right so you don't always necessarily play this at the beginning of the game it really depends what your alternate choices are and letting it letting one of the pieces run get away at the beginning this early is not recommended so what the black will do is go five here and a three here hit this guy and this guy goes up so you just took out the white guy and the white guy can in general land easily right and what the black is doing right now is basically setting themselves up to cover these spots right so right now not only can you do combinations of numbers that are two apart to cover pieces now you can do four apart as well right because the distance between this and this is four one two three four right so six and a two now allows you to cover this spot six and a th um, six and a three sorry six and a two allows you to cover this spot six hold on a second one two three four five six yeah six and a two lets this one five and a one lets this one five and a three lets this one three and a one lets this one right so there's a whole bunch of combinations going on here as soon as you start lining up your pieces here so the white is hit white has to land white rolls five three the player can go five here and play three this one they can do five here play three this one they can do five here three this one or five here three that one right now what the white is going to do is going to do this they're going to put the three here okay and they're going to put five here the reason the white is going to play this is because if you put the five here then you're in range of this guy right if you put the three land the three a six for the black takes it here so you're eliminating one possible combination of the black hitting you and covering you right because if you go here now five and a one nails you right a five and a three would nail you right so maybe we don't want to do that maybe we want to play out of range and range is something you're going to have to keep in mind okay that was the right rolling let's roll the black six two this is a no-brainer for the black six two okay white rolls two three now what you can do for two and three you can cover this two which is a good thing to do for the white to cover at least one territory in the black side and for the black to cover one territory there right so to put white place two and place three here okay oops for us if the dice land on here land on here or land on here they don't count and if they jump off the table you gotta grab the rice dice and re-roll 
right? And what I'm doing right now is I'm rolling gently so the dice don't have the opportunity to roll off the table. I don't want to really move too much. But when we play, we really sometimes nail the dice. If they're not, if the luck is not going our way or we're pushing our luck, we've gotten doubles and a double is going to get a gamut from someone. Sometimes we try to hit the dice right on the edges here to get them spinning. And these dice spin nicely. Okay. Let me just read a couple of comments that were put up. Not to get off topic, but how old is that set? It seems like an antique. I, I'm a, I don't know if it's an antique. It's at least, I would say it's at least 40 years old. Okay. <laughs> 35 to 40 at least. Okay. Uh, Chicho said it was about 35. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. I always watch my family play but never bother to learn but definitely will soon i feel like it's getting increasingly unpopular within armenia yeah you know what i met a lot of uh, armenians and persians that they don't know how to play this game to me not knowing how to play this game if if you're from certain parts of the world is like being from brazil and not having kicked a soccer ball all right it just doesn't make sense to me, right? Um, I highly recommend this game to everyone, not just from people where the game originated from. So not quite as old as it looks. No, not maybe, I don't know. I'll ask family how old this board game is. Uh, it, I believe it came with us from Iran when we immigrated to Canada in 78, long time ago, long time ago, okay. So who played? I forgot who played last. I think it was the white. Is that correct? The white played two and three, so the black has to roll. Yep. Black rolls four one. What I'm gonna do with the black is I'm gonna put a four here. Actually, I'm not. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a four here, and I'm gonna put a one here. And the reason I put a four here, instead of putting a four here, oops a four and a one here to cover this is because i wanted to break this up and by putting putting a four here i all of a sudden have one extra piece here to cover spots here if i need to so now a four and a two will allow me to do this a six and a two will allow me to do this right so you always in general when you're covering spots what you want to do is not have a whole bunch of pieces on one territory you want to break it up ideally to have three pieces where you can cover multiple spots again okay so the black played a played a four and a one this is the white four and a one four and a one the white's going to do this a four and a one okay covering territory anywhere is a good idea the black again four one what i'm going to do i'm going to do this 4-1 play this one right i could have done a four and a one again but i don't want to get into the range of this guy and i want to i don't want to come into the range here where my five and six are blocked because if i came here one of the things i should have said if i came here and if the black got a five and a six the five is blocked one two three four five he can't go there or she can't go there and six is blocked and they can't go there so any spots that are blocked the other color can't go there and if both spots are blocked then they can't go period right so if i was here if i rolled a six and a four the six is blocked can't go but the four can go here okay and if the six could have gone it, it would have gone right so keep that in mind as well but the six and a four a four here and a six here can't go so it gets blocked okay so that's the reason why i put the black there okay so what i'm going to do or in the original where i played the four one here and i left the black here i didn't move it up one right so now it's the white's turn again white rolls in a three one and a three one and a three right now for the white is a no-brainer Here's a three, here's a one. As soon as you block more pieces here, you're preventing these guys from having the option to use these spots as movement, as stepping stones, right? 
So right now, before the white played that, if the black got a three and a six, they could have gone three and a six, tried to escape. They couldn't have gone six and a three because the six is blocked, but the three was open and they could have gone three and a six. But now that the white has closed this off, a three and a six prevents this from going. Okay, yeah, important to remember it is a six plus four and not 10. Yeah, 100%. It's not the total, it's the combination that matters. And by the way, I guess we should have mentioned this at the beginning. Any doubles means you can play four of those numbers. So double sixes means you play four sixes. Double fours means you play four fours. Double ones means you got four ones to play. So doubles counts as four, four of, the, of that number, okay? So the white rolled. Now the black now the black has to roll, right? Six one. Six one, we've got a couple of things we can do. Okay. One of them is to try our luck to try to escape because this is getting getting covered. This is getting dangerous territory now, right? For the black, right? If this person gets covered, this spot gets covered, the black is partially in trouble. So the black can force the white play and go six and a one. They're doing double push up, right? The other thing the black can do is do defensive and block this person so, since they're getting blocked there with a six and a one, but they're leaving one spot open here. That means there's a possibility of them having three plate, three spot, three pieces being knocked down to here, which right now might not be a bad idea for the black because they're getting blocked in. So if you're getting blocked in, to a certain degree, it's better to almost have three pieces, depending on how the pieces are laid out, than to have two pieces, or definitely better, two pieces is better than having only one piece if you're blocked in, right? So I'm gonna do that for the black. The white rolling. The white roll six and a three, right? So two choices the white has. The white can go six and a three, right? which means that the white escaped one piece but it is dangerous since they're leaving this person unguarded right and since this person's slowly starting to cover if they get anything they're going to try to hit this and then they got a lot of combinations that can take this guy out right the other thing the white can do is try to make this better for them and they can go six and a three here right and that's what we're going to do for the white. They're going to block the person in, try to block him in, the black, right? They're opening themselves up to a hit, but I'd rather do that than do this, okay? Because the black also has to worry about this piece being open, right? So that's the white. Let's roll the black. The black gets 3 2. This is a no-brainer for the black the black can escape three two right two three or three two gets here but that's not the what the black's going to do black's going to do this and that is basically a lifesaver for the black two and a three they cover themselves up that means they can't get destroyed here if the white goes on a nice little roll to cover all their spots and hit their pieces so if you're the other person's territory if you can cover spots in their territory do it okay oops let me roll here but that was a five and a one i'm rolling here because it's closer to the camera further away from the mic so apologies about that roll if it was really loud the five five one is the white guy rolling right so the white is going to do a no-brainer hit this but it leaves them open here right so it's going to go one and it's going to go five now it's not the safest move for the white, but it is the right move. So right now the black needs this one, two, or a four with a five. So if they get a five, right, all they need is one, two, or a four to be able to hit this piece, right? Because this person, this point here, hits that with a five. And that's really what you want. That's what the black is shooting for, right? So three and a two, it can land the two, it can't move the three, and this guy you're not gonna open, not 
this is last resort to open this, right? Because the three can go here, but that would be suicide for the black. So what can the black do with the three? This is the only logical move because the three can't go there. You're not going to bring, bring the three here because it leaves it open. You're not going to open this up. So this is the three that you're going to do. So making this spot have three pieces was also a lifesaver, sort of a lifeline. So you did a three here. Okay. Now the white's going to roll. What the white needs to do is cover these. Ideally, what the white wants is five and a two. That'll cover that. Six and a four is pretty sweet as well. Or double twos or double sixes. Okay. Six and a four. So this is the, what the white's going to do. A six and a four hits the black, comes up, covers at the same time. Perfect move, right? So now the black is again looking for a one and a five or four and a five, right? And when we play backgammon, we call out numbers that we want all the time, all the time. Maybe call it superstition, but in my opinion, it helps roll those numbers, right? So the black wants one and a five or four and a five. Four, two, which is still okay. Four and a two, we're going to do this. Again, we're going to make this a triple spot. Okay. The white's going to roll. Four and a three. Now take a look at this. This guy can't move. Three and four are blocked. This guy can do a three, cover that. But the four is blocked. So that means they would either have to play this, this, or that, which you're not going to do. So what the white's going to do, white's going to get this guy out of the range of this. Because this needs a five to hit. But this guy needs, from here to here, it needs an eight. So it needs a six, two, or a five, three. Right? Double fours is not going to do because the four is covered from here. Oops. So four, three, we're going to go three, four, come here. Okay. Now it's the black's turn. Black wants an eight, but a five, three, and a six, two. Okay, not just an eight. Four, four doesn't do, right? Six, five. This guy's gonna come out. Six and a five, right? Six and a five, okay? If that was an eight, three takes you to 15. That's what six and a five is, right? And the reason I brought this here is to prevent this guy one of these guys from escaping with a six by itself if they decide to run at least anyway right i am putting myself in danger though right but six and a five was basically my only move if i did this if i covered this with a five i could do this with a six but that takes away some of my options in this area the doubling up the free players that i can play with and hit and run right or just hit and cover right so six and a five is that's what the black is going to do white turn white wants a six and a one that's going to be a lifesaver for them right because it means the black has to land and if they can't land they're in trouble right six four white has two options six four covers this or they could do four six escape that's the only two choices really six and a four they can't go six and four because this is blocked now what the white's going to do is the white's going to run the reason the white's going to run is because the black has an open spot here if the black didn't have this piece here the odds are the white would do this okay because if they run and this person the black gets a combination they can hit and cover and the white, let's say they would get that, the white wouldn't have the opportunity to hit a black piece when they're landing. So what's going to happen is, so what's going to happen is, the white is going to push the black player, right? And this is where the psychological comes in, right? The white is going to challenge the black player and say six, four, and they're going to say, if you got the guts, Hit me with a combination and cover they can't cover this the only number combination that will allow the black to cover this if the black gets double fives because double fives would bring these two guys here 
and one five here and they have one more five to play it that means they cover right so what the black is cheering for right now and rooting for right now is double fives oh. <laughs> and double fives is it right so the black two fives there remember with doubles you play four of that and by the way this is rare i think this is the first doubles we've gotten reaching this point usually a lot more doubles show up so that's two there that's three right cover that now this guy can come here this guy would come here you're not going to move that right but this guy can come here or you can open up this guy right if you open up that guy let's see what the white can do because if you open up four pieces right if the black's playing four pieces open is very very dangerous right because if the white gets well let's see the combination two and a six they hit the black and the black has to land and they got three pieces open right if they get five and a three they hit if they get five and a five they hit if they get two and a three they hit if they get five and a three they hit if they get two and a four right if i was the white i would hit that if they get five and a four they hit so the black is not going to do that right the black is going to play the five here it's too dangerous of a role okay too dangerous of a role okay <laughs> christian says unbelievable and that's what you do right you call a number when you get it and it's a double number or something rare that comes up probability less what you do is psych out the other player right so that's one reason when i play backgammon we call out the numbers right that's another reason why i don't like a lot of tournament games because you're supposed to play quietly you can't psych the other person out but money games when you play it with people we say from the beginning we let it know from the beginning right that is part of backgammon that is the interaction of backgammon okay it's very dynamic morphs just imagine what happens during an eight hour session between two people playing backgammon over drinks or tea and food and and laughing and chatting and talking about life and calling games it's absolutely amazing right so it's the white's turn now the white what they want is double fives because double fives they land they hit right so usually if someone gets a double and the other person wants that roll you you know you should make it known that you're rolling the dice you're not setting the dice where you're setting it and rolling it gently so you get that roll so you roll them so the white needs double fives can we get double fives again very difficult not no not today so that's a three and a four the white can't land now the black has an opportunity to run and to cover these two spots right two one two one black takes away more options from the white the white can only land with a five now okay so the white is is again looking for double fives three two doesn't work so the white can't land the black goes four two a five two would have been sweet so the black is going to do this just to oh the black is not going to do this well it has to do this this guy can't move that's a two and a four the black can do four and then a two or it can do two and a four which you're not going to do that that means you're giving the opportunity for the white to land and hit at the same time so you're going to go four and a two okay white's turn white needs to land five that's sweet white lands now they can do this but they're not because they would be in range of the black so they're going to do that okay they're behind the lines nothing can hit them the black wants double twos or double ones okay double sixes very sweet very sweet okay double sixes two sixes and two sixes okay that's four sixes moved okay. the white needs to get out of town and they need to get out of town fast this is too dangerous for the white to keep this piece here okay because if the black gets combination that are two numbers apart they hit them right unless they get something very sweet that they can do something else with okay 
Black looking strong. Looks very strong right now. 6-4. Is the white going to go? I think the white's going to go. If this was a money game, right now the white would go and the black would double. Okay. That's what they would do. They will double the price of the game. The white, what can it do? It can do a six, this guy. Let's, let's look at what the possibilities are. Six and a four. That doesn't do too much good for them, right? Because they're doing a Hail Mary, hoping that the black is going to get something here that's going to open one piece. And the odds of it happening in the first round is not going to happen, right? They could do six and a four like this. That doesn't do much either. So the white's going to run six and a four and try their luck at getting doubles. If I was playing for money, I would leave that in there. You would leave that in there as long as, like, for example, the white saying they would, um, Dr. Prune is saying that they would leave the white here. That is a very good possibility, right? So the white would do this six and a four, right? You don't want to leave two things open. Now, if you're playing for money, the black, what they would do, because they don't want to take the risk of getting a bad number and having to leave a piece unprotected, right? So what the black would do on the doubling dice, they would double the game. And the white can try their luck and accept the double, right? But I wouldn't highly recommend it because they're way behind. So they're going against the odds, right? So Dr. Prune, is that what you want to do? Should we do that? Because I'm open. If you guys want any of either the white or the black to play something else, we can definitely do that. So should we leave, should we leave it like this? Do it this way? I'm going to eat an orange. I agree. Okay, done deal. So the black ones, double twos, double fours, doctor's orders four two or double ones or almost anything else because i don't think anything can leave one of the spots open six and a three the black gets here's a three here's a six now the white the, the white is in better position because there's only one combination two two or three combinations that'll knock them out and cover but there is possibility now that the black, if they get a six and a two, they will have to leave a spot open, right? A piece open. That could be a good lesson to show how quickly the game can change. For sure, the game can definitely change on the next roll of the black's dice, right? So the white's going to roll now. The white rolls 4-2 right here. Now the white is not going to move their pieces even if these two go there, because they're going to hope that something is going to open up. So the white's going to push it to the end, stay there until these five pieces are either on that side or one of them is open. Okay. White rolls. Oh, sorry. Black rolls. 4-2. Check this out. So this slows the black down into bringing their pieces into their territory, right? Because the black's not going to do four and then a two because that leaves them vulnerable, right? So it means you're slowing down Dr. Prune. What they did, they slowed down the black's movement, right? So the black's going to do this, four and a two. And I'm not playing this one as a two because I want to leave more options for the dice just in case I end up getting a three. I can do this. I don't have to. If I do this as a two, I don't have to open up a piece, right? So you're looking to provide yourself as many options as possible. The white's going to roll. 3-1. A 3 and a 1. Okay. And opening this up here, so a 6 will cover this up as well. Or a 1 will hit, cover this up. Okay. Black rolls. Whatever the black gets, the black doesn't want a 2. A 2 is no good for the black unless it's double 2s double fives two fives and two fives and the game's over for the white so the white wants to do is get back there as fast as possible 
and at least remove one piece that way they only lose one game it was a double game because the black would have doubled if you were playing money but they don't want to lose a double like a double count game okay so the white needs doubles three one now there's an art to strategy to bringing your pieces when you're trying to run back as fast as you can bringing your pieces into your home territory so you can take out a piece without getting gammoned okay and the trick is this you're trying to do movements from one block to another with the least number of points on the dice as possible so this is one block this is one block that's one block and that's one block so a one and a three if i move this one and move it at three i've only moved one block right if i move this one and this three one two three i've only moved one block one piece from one block to another if i do this a one one piece has moved one block then i can move this a three that means another piece moved another block right that increases your chances of getting there in time better now you can get the hell out of dodge <laughs> now you can get the hell out of dodge right this would also be a legitimate role to move that piece into that block if you want you could do that right that way you only have to keep track of one thing but i'm going to do this that way i have two pieces to optimize my roles if need be okay now the black wants doubles because doubles you can move you can remove four at a time if you have the pieces there you basically move four of the dice right six two you don't have a six so you work your way down six five four and a two the white one and a six what i'm going to do with the white i'm going to move this six moves it one full block and i'm going to move this one one closer to the edge of this block instead of moving this one right because what it does is if i get a one i can move this in okay now this is going to be a single game right because this guy is not going to get one two three more doubles before the white gets his territory in there it might but it's not gonna happen double threes one three two three 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 four three the white's out now the white's in there and the white still has the possibility of winning let's do a count okay so never give up on a game unless you know the count okay that you don't have any chance let's assume the black is only going to remove two at a time so on the next row they're going to remove this let's assume the white's going to get double sixes they're going to move those right let's assume the black moves two on the next row white moves gets double sixes again they luck out they get double sixes so all of these pieces are gone i'm going to keep them where they are the black takes out two the white double fours double fives or double sixes gets them moving six moving four and they can win the game because the black has five pieces they can't even get a double to win the piece so the white's going to keep on rolling until the probability on you know the doors are closed for the white to win right so that was double three let the black roll the black rolls four to six the highest pieces are here four five six so that's a four and the four was here that's a three but we've got to take out a four and that's it so you're taking up from the top down right if you don't have you remove something lower the white rolls they want double sixes five and a one the chances of the white winning now have decreased dramatically okay the black roll that's two pieces the white rolls they need double sixes six two let's do another count the black's gonna roll that's two pieces the white rolls that's four pieces the black would roll that's two pieces the white roll that's four pieces the black roll that's two pieces ah the white still has a chance right the white needs doubles badly double twos doesn't do it there's one two here so that comes out two twos three twos and four twos and usually you wouldn't do this one you would do this one 
But the white, the only way they can win is if they get doubles and high doubles. So they don't care if they can't remove a two. They want to move all their pieces from here this way. Okay. The black. Double fours. It's over, right? If the black, oh no, it's not over. Check this out. So they move double, so four pieces. The black, if they get double sixes, they remove all these. And if the black, uh, sorry, the white, they can move all these. The white, if they get two, they remove these. And if the white gets another double, they remove all those. So they're still in the game, right? Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. The white has to roll now, right? And the game's over for the white. Okay. So that's one point for the white. And that's sort of running through one backgammon of the way how it could play out. Should we do one on a faster pace? Right. What do you guys think? I'm um, keep in mind I'm gonna do another live stream. How are we doing for time? Oh yeah, that took an hour. Fast pace would be uh, quick. And keep in mind, after the stream, we're gonna stop the stream and I'm gonna do a little rearranging and we're gonna do a quick comic book haul video because I just got this package yesterday and I gotta crank it open. And I, I promised people yesterday during the mass session that we're gonna do the comic book live stream today, the comic haul, and it's a quick one. And it's something that uh, I really wanna take a look at. I've been looking for this set for a very long time and I was able to find a really good deal on it. Okay, by luck, by luck. And I'll, uh, I'll show you the, the buy before we end this stream, okay? So let's do another quick round. And let me give you, show you one other thing here as well, okay? This is the original dice we had with this board. And they've been chipped, right? So they wouldn't be considered fair die. Let me bring us this up here. Hopefully you can see that. Let's see if it zooms in. Uh, let's bring it in. Zooming in. I don't know if it's zooming in or not. But on the top part of the six there, that's like chipped, right? So it's not fair die, but both players are playing with the same dice, right? A lot of places that I've seen people play in my part of the world, they each have a little cup. They and they all have their own colored dice and they roll the dice and stuff like this but that's not the way i like playing we like sharing dice we play with the same die so if two people are playing with the same die then if the die are not fair that means they're not balanced equally right if the distribution this the stats for the dice if this table let me bring out the table if this table right let me make this bigger see if we can make it bigger doop, 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 doop table table oh yeah it's locked that's why oops what was this one? Oh yeah that's the distribution for the thing uh, where is that graph oh yeah I gotta unlock this guy okay let me show you this what it means when the die are not fair it means this table doesn't look exactly the way it does right it becomes skewed either this way or that way or it has peaks right so, you know one number the probability of the six may be appearing is higher than the probability of seven and if you ever play craps that's you know in a casino that's what you'll see uh, the pit boss is doing when they grab a die and they spin it what they're doing they're checking to see if the die spin symmetrically right if they don't they ditch the dice because what it is it means that die is not fair it doesn't have that distribution to it right so what we're going to do now is play a faster game okay and what we'll do is after that we'll do a little pause i'm going to rearrange and then we're going to do a comic book haul video right and in general when we play whoever wins rolls first so the black one black's going to roll first okay six one no brainer on a first roll three one no brainer for the white roll 
six five for the white now the white can't go six can't go five this guy can't go so the white's gonna go six and a five because that's the only six they have to a certain degree or this six and the five goes there right so the black needs a one they don't get it but a no-brainer four two white three two the white was unlucky they can't cover that up so what they're gonna do is they're gonna do three two here they could also move two here okay to get this guy to cover himself up right but three two actually let's do that let's do the white two and let's do the white three the white's taking a risk right now okay the black rolls three one they can hit their piece here i don't understand a thing but it's relaxing feels good man <laughs> that's good dante awesome i'm glad you're enjoying it i was worried about the sound of the dice right so check out the black the black got three and a one now they can hit this piece bring this guy here but they can't cover this up with a three right or they can do three and a one or they can do one and then they got to play a three which means they either open this or open this having three white pieces here is a good idea so they're going to do one and three like this and this black guy gets in the range of that guy so the white rolls white wants a five one of the open spots and a five three and a six here's a three because they can't land a six and they have a six the six goes here hits it the six goes here escapes tries to escape but it's not worth it they're gonna have two pieces open in opening territory so the white's gonna hit the black okay x welcome welcome 24 x <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> nice to have you here nice to have you here we're doing a quick backgammon game we already did a slow one going through the strategies right and we just started this one you're catching the start of a quick game okay and it's the black's turn right so the black rolls four three four three the black's gonna hit the four and they're gonna go three okay because they're not gonna bring the three here the white's in a predicament now they got four pieces here so what the white wants to do is land with a one and keep these two pieces blocked right because having two pieces blocked in someone's home territory is pretty powerful space to be in it's not the greatest because you got four pieces but it's a strong position right you fortified yourself six three it didn't happen but they're gonna go three and they're gonna do six the whites basically doing Hail Mary now and they're doing a position where they know they got a lot of pieces here so they don't care about hitting because once it reaches a certain point if the white has too many pieces here this is reaching too many pieces for the black then it's not good for the black okay games like that turn fast so the black rolls three and a six here's a three and they're gonna do this with the six because they want to have open pieces free pieces here to do things in this zone white rolls double fours double fours double fours well this is what the white's gonna do the white could come one here this piece here but they're not this guy's blocked they could hit this guy right or they could do this two pieces here and two pieces here right that's a strong position but this is what the white's gonna do the white's going all out now right they're doing two here and they're gonna hit this guy with the open okay that's three fours and here's a four four and the reason white's doing this is because you've collected two of the black's pieces and the black will have to be lucky to be able to land both pieces they might be unlucky to land any pieces and if they have a little bit of luck they'll hit the white piece but the white guy's got a piece here this piece this position is very strong if you can get it both for the attacker and the defender this and this are very powerful this and this are very powerful to have right so that's what the white's going to do 
it doesn't look as nice but it's a better play okay man this game is so relaxing sending me slowly to sleep nice very good man very good um so the blacks turn to roll and the black what does the black need double threes is perfect for black okay double ones is good for black double sixes is horrendous for black right they can't land it's blocked off and the white is sitting pretty right now they want a five and a three or a five and a five okay. double twos double twos what do we do with double twos it's a pretty sweet play to cover this but to go one two here but a better play is this two twos and two twos to prevent the black from landing reduce the number of choices they have to land okay blacks turn to roll six and a five the blacks in trouble right now because they can't land and they have two pieces hit white rolls three and a five very sweet this is what the white is going to do you could go five and a three but that's is not the best play what you're gonna do is gonna do a three grab three pieces from the black and you're gonna bring a five here the reason you're gonna open this up is because you want to get more pieces here so you can cover this ASAP and reduce the choices that the black has really and you had a choice of doing this but you wouldn't do that that's horrendous play okay I've seen some people do some kind of stuff like that blacks turn black needs to land three and a one double ones or double threes one two they're able to land one piece it's not the best but it's at least one piece landed the white rolls if the white gets a two it's gonna hit that okay four and a three four and a three here's one thing the white can do the white can go four and a three hit that guy to prevent the black from being able to block that spot or the white can run right since I'm playing both, I'm gonna do this. Four and a three. Because if this is a money game, I want a double game. I have to say you have explained it really well. Oh, my pleasure, man. I played this a lot of I've actually um, taught a lot of people, uh younger generation from my extended family how to play backgammon. And a lot of the younger generation in my family have sat down and watched me and my grandmother play backgammon and would ask questions. So um I would try to explain why I'm doing things and this is sort of what I've learned from teaching mathematics is to don't take anything for granted right so the black is in serious trouble the black needs one and a three one and a three is perfect double threes is perfect double ones is perfect three is okay they hit one piece now the white's going back on a defensive the white doesn't really want to do that anymore right four and a three a three and a four white wants to come back here cover that up and get these guys out okay black one and a three. Oh. One and a three right so the white pushed their luck right they went too far the black got lucky they hit one more piece the white has two pieces open four pieces here the white is in trouble it's flipped right me too love the reaction on the face of somebody i have taught when they beat me for the first time if only they knew how glad it, it also made me for sure for sure christian's like ouch <laughs> that hurt <laughs> for sure definitely hurt for the black x is like oh no the white is it the white da, 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 da. yeah it's the white rolling they get three and the six they can't they can't move this guy but they're gonna bring this guy out or they're not gonna do that they're gonna bring this guy here because if they bring that out the black's just gonna nail them right so the black wants six and a two and the game's over actually they don't want too many more pieces too many more whites here this is too many whites in the blacks territory double twos for the black so this is what the black's going to do three twos here one two here okay white rolls 
Three one. White covers this up. Black rolls. Double fours. Yikes. White the black did not want double fours. But no choice. Black's gonna do this. Three and four. We could have gone all up, but we want to leave some pieces here to prevent this guy from escaping, right? Or knock him down a little bit. That was the black. Here's the white. Five, two. White can hit the black. White can go five, two. Or white can go two, five. White's got no choice. They got to do this. They got to try to get some kind of advantage. So they're trying to prevent the black from landing or having any place so they can get a better position happening with all these pieces they have right black is double fours they don't land right four spots taken white white gets five two white covers up again it's dangerous because if the white gets three and a four they're screwed here right they can't move they can't play right but that was a good play they don't want any more pieces here um, actually let's think about this 5-2 right if the black lands here one and they can't cover this up the white has a chance to hit another piece right so let's do it that way 5-2 let's go out let's go for a run here's a five here's a two so the white's laying it out assuming hoping that the black will not land since it's the white's been playing risky let's do the risky game for the white black rolls black needs a one they get a one here's a one and they have a six the six hits this guy you're not going to do that black right this guy can hit this guy you're not going to do that you can't cover this up you're not going to move that guy should you move that guy out yeah let's move that guy out the six goes there we could move that guy there but i want to leave two spots open in black's home territory um the white rolls right the white needs a two they get a six and a three here's a three and they have a six this guy goes there that's not a good move that guy goes there that leaves two spots here this guy's gonna run okay black rolls double fives double fives so check this out this is what the black's going to do they're going to cover this up that's one they're going to go two three they're going to hit this guy okay and they're going to go four here okay what the white needs is five three or three five same deal right or three three or one and a three here's a one here's a three right now the black three one again right no dice now the white's gonna try to distribute their pieces double fives that's a good roll there's two here's two we're gonna do that we want to keep one spot closed here we're not going to open up we're not going to open up everything here for the white and it's good to have a sort of an island that they can land on there okay black roll double twos nada white five four here's a four here's a five okay it's good to have be closer up here okay black roll double threes Here's one three. Here is three threes. Here is four three. Okay. Now it's becoming more balanced. Been a good game. Yeah, it's been a really good game actually. Been a very good game. Double twos for the black, right? I believe it's double twos for the black. The black moved three here. Or is it double twos for the white? No, no, no. The white moved here. That's right. Five and a four. So it's double twos for the black, right? So the black's going to do this. Here's two twos. Okay. And this two twos. 
The white needs a one. And they get two ones. That's nice. There's one one. And this is what the white's going to do. That's one one. They want to buy themselves time. Here's three ones. And here's four ones. Okay. Now the black needs one and a four to land. They get one four. They land, but they can't play the two because they still have one piece hidden. Hit, right? They haven't landed. So the white needs double fours is beautiful for white. There's two fours there and two fours there. That'll change the game for the white. Okay. That would almost be game over for the black. Oh, double fours. Five and a two again. Five and a two again. So this is what the white's going to do. Five and a two. Here's a five. Here's a two. The white's going to hit this guy. Keep in mind, they're buying themselves time. Hoping to, anyway. Black needs a four. Black gets double sixes. Ouch. That's two double sixes the black's gotten while they were hit. Right? White. Five, four. Five, four. What the white's going to do is do this. They want more pieces close to this to cover up just in case he lives to fight another day. Right? Black rolls. A one for the black. But they can't play the five because they still have one piece hit. Six and a one. Look at this. They don't cover this. But what they can do is the white can do six and a one. Right? So that's still looking good for the white. I would have preferred to cover this. Right? Black needs four. Double fours is basically game for the black because the four, they would land here and they would hit here. Right? Ooh, ooh. Okay, I gotta roll more gentle. Oh, Jimmy Dunn counts as a, for us, even a miss roll, if it lands properly, it counts as a roll. So that's a roll. I was trying to throw it here, but it fell over here. 5 3, black can't do anything. 3 2 for the white. They still haven't covered it. So the white has two choices they can bring this guy up, escape, or they can take the risk and say, you know what? If they cover that, they got game. So this is what the white is going to do. They're going to go two here, and they're going to go three here. Okay? They're pushing their luck. Remember, the white's been playing the risky game, right? 6-2, the black doesn't land. Wow, she's she's gets banned. Oh, I didn't catch anything coming up. Uh, let's see. Roll for... That was the black. Here's the white. Oh, six, four. The white's going to try to get there as soon as possible. Four, six. They could have gone four, six here, but you want to get another piece there to have more options to close this, right? Black, five, one. Doesn't land. White, six, two. White covers it up. Six, two. The black can't roll right now because they got no empty spots to land. White is sitting pretty as long as they get a four or a six and nothing big if they don't get a four and a six. If they get a five and a three, they have to open up. It's not good. If they get a three and a two, they have to open up because they don't have enough pieces to play, right? So it's a dangerous game for the white. So the white either wants really low numbers but preferably the white wants a four or a six. Six and a one. Six and a one. Sweet. So they keep on going. Five and a three. They, this guy's stuck still, right? Here's a five. But the three, I'm going to move this. Okay. White rolls again. Four and one. Here's a four. And I didn't, if this three was going here, I wouldn't have moved it. But because I left myself a one, I didn't have a one here. I can do a one here, which is super sweet. So the white keeps on rolling. Double threes. Awesome. Here's two threes. It can't go again. Here's three three. Here's four three. White does not want double threes again. Three and a one. They've jumped over. Perfect. 
six and a five is not good for the white because if they get a six and a five they got to play a six and then they got to remove a five right and the way we play um it's sort of a rule special rule the way we do it is if you're rolling dice and for example let me actually it hasn't come up so i won't explain it but basically if you can play a bigger role you have to play the bigger role right as long as it doesn't eliminate you from playing a big role okay i, I know i know i'm not explaining that properly but I, I would have to rearrange everything and i don't want to rearrange everything maybe we'll do it on the next backgammon game that we play this has been a great game <laughs> it has been definitely super fun game so the white's going to roll now they don't want a six and a five no six and a five or double sixes or double fives because it means they're going to leave one of these guys open okay six and a four which is perfect right they're gonna go six and then they're gonna go four okay so they're already taking pieces off black's got two pieces hit they're in serious trouble white now the black in the background right now is cheering for the white to get six and a one because a six and a one does this and then on the next round they want the white to get two big numbers because that means they open something up, right? So always keep in mind the combination that might be coming up. So the white rolls again, five, two. Now the white can do this, five and a two, but the white would be silly to do that because they already got game and it's a basically a double game. So the white's gonna play inside. They're gonna go two and a five. You don't wanna leave gaps between your pieces that you're removing, okay? Especially if you have, or if you have, pieces from the other player hit that they might land right so the black is going to roll now because there's a spot open and the black does not want to land if they land they want double sixes to make sure they're not gammoned right no landing the black in the background is cheering for the white to get double fours double fives or double sixes because that's odd so they'll have to leave one open double five the black is cheering for double sixes, double fives, or double fours. Two and a one. This is what the white's going to do. That's a two. That's a one. Okay. They could have gone two, one up, but it's okay. We do it that way. Black rolls. Four, five, nothing. White rolls. Two, one. They take it. Okay. Black rolls. Five, one, nothing. Now the white in the background is hoping that the black is going to land. They want the black to land, right? Ooh, that was a bad roll on my part. Double twos for the black. They don't land. Oh, double fives for the white. The black does not want to land. They don't want to land, even if it's a gambling game, right? Five two. They need the white to get a double. Only a double can save the black skin. Double anything double twos or higher, right? Six five. Right now, the black is hoping they get a two and a one, double twos or double ones, because that way they don't land and the white rolls and hopefully they open this up, right? And they can hit it. Right? Two one. Oh, so close. No cigar. And this is basically a gammon the way I play. But there are people who play if which is a double game the way I play it. there are people who play that if the if you're taking out your pieces and the other player still has pieces in your territory and you take out all of your pieces that's a quadruple game or something like that right or a triple game so right now the white is hoping for a doubles they don't get the black is hoping to have both get both these pieces out of there They're not able to do it so they're going to do two and they're going to do three and they're hoping that the black or they're hoping that the black is hoping that the white doesn't get a double right even double ones it's gone triple it's almost a triple game two one and it's not a triple game right and the black rolls and it's a gammon right there's a four there's a two two fun game fun game fun game definitely a fun game okay uh that's backgammon 
I hope you enjoy it. I love explaining backgammon. I love showing backgammon to people, uh, getting people to be interested in the game and playing a game, right? Or learning the rules and becoming experts because the more people know how to play this game well, the more chances, opportunity, personally, I have to play with really good players, right? And, uh, you know, you could play money games, tournament games, round robin games. Sometimes the way we've played, we've had in family gatherings where there's a lot of elders and a lot of people that are playing backgammon and you would we would have this people would have dinner or before dinner or after dinner what we would do is whoever wanted to play backgammon would play one dollar you put into the pot right and we play round robin and people who are playing against each other they can play for money as well but anybody playing either puts a dollar or two dollars into the pot and whoever that wins three games in a row if there's four of us playing it means they have to beat beat the other three players so anyone that beats every other player right if there's if there's four people playing if they win three games in a row they win the pot if there's two people playing if there's three people playing they still we still say three games right so they might not get a chance to play a person twice again if we have four people five people playing sometimes we say you have to beat everybody all four games in a row sometimes we say three or whatnot and this builds up when you have really good players we've had pots grow like if you have like a bowl we had like a whole bowl of money like change in the pot which is like you know into the tens of dollars right 20 30 dollars into the pots where people all of a sudden during an event that all the families got together you have food you have dinner you're playing games all night and someone wins the pot right and then you start up another pot it's, it's a lot of fun a lot of fun next time i can play you for sure for sure uh dr prune 100 percent next time when we do this if anybody's game if you guys will do choices we'll roll one for me we'll roll one for you and sometimes the obvious play is obvious sometimes there are multiple choices we'll show the choices and you guys say if you want to play the first choice the second choice or the third choice or whatever it is right i would definitely be game for that definitely be game for that okay wonderful stream thank you Chicho. my pleasure man my pleasure and what i'm going to do is i'm going to rearrange these things it should take me about let me see what time it is it should take me about an hour or so to do it and what we're gonna do is let me pop this up uh, take a look at this I did a comic book haul uh, I bought a set of comics okay and I'm gonna show you what they are right now uh, just for those of you who can't join the stream in about let's say it's gonna take me an hour to do this so let's say right now it's four three forty five my time let's say four forty five my time so an hour for you do you play chess yeah I play chess a lot when I was younger and I do stay play for fun but I'm not very good I, I was way better when I was younger okay um, but I do play chess within family when we get together for dinner and stuff we do play chess and it's a lot of fun but I'm not very good um, I, I consider myself to be a very good backgammon player right and I have played with a lot of people who considered themselves to be very good and I've won a lot of money from them okay <laughs> because those people who assume they're very good uh, usually end up risking a lot and they can't believe that they were losing to someone that they thought they were better at right uh, like a lot right but uh, so I sort of focus on, on backgammon and chess just became a little bit too intense for my blood when I was playing with people people would get pissed and whatnot so I slowly phased that off and I just play for fun now I'm not very good I'm not very good okay uh, but let me show you what the comic book hall is right and I'm gonna pop this up it's I bought Rachel rising 1 to 22 and this was unfortunately was being shipped through eBay's global shipping program okay and I before bidding on this I actually contacted the person and asked them if they would ship outside of eBay's global shipping program and they said yes and they got me an estimate and it was $37 US so we said okay we'll make it we'll make it global shipping program so I bought this set so what I'm going to show you I want to check this is what we bought and take a look at that listing that's what he's written but do you see anything that's 
off with this listing and keep this image in mind you can replay it okay you on YouTube on Twitch right it's gonna take longer for it to load on YouTube but there's something wrong with the listing that this person made and I was lucky enough that it didn't catch other people didn't catch it in their searches and that's the reason I was able to buy this for $14.99 I wish I didn't have to pay the 27 for eBay's global shipping program and the box is a little damaged but that's what we're gonna look at in an hour okay uh, that's about it guys uh, I hope I hope you enjoy it I love I love that yeah man uh, thank you for being here and uh, I'll see you guys in an unannounced or unscheduled live stream in an hour we'll do the comic book haul video and uh, what we'll do after that probably in a couple of days I'll do another announcement I'll set up my schedule and uh, <laughs> Achu has caught the mistake, right? It's racial rising, not it's supposed to be Rachel rising, not racial rising, right? And uh, what we'll do in uh, probably in the next two or three days is I'll set up my schedule and pronounce, you know, set the events, uh, schedule the events for the next live streams, figure out what we're going to do. Okay. See you guys in an hour. Bye for now. And thank you for, for being here. For sure. Thank you for being here.